supposedly, I believe it would be tomorrow, they're releasing uh, the rest of the Kennedy assassination files. Uh, Kennedy helped assassinate my father and kidnap me. Assassination, a character assassination that took down Edward VIII. And uh, this is my dad. He married Claudia Ruth O'Keefe. Sister to artist George O'Keefe, my mom was a school teacher. Therefore, my uh, the O'Keefe's for, were from Madison, Wisconsin, and Georgia had Ghost Ranch out uh, in near Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, I wanted to put this up. Uh, I wrote about mind control murders, but in 1978, and I was almost killed April Fool Day of '80. It was a medical malpractice book, and it involved um, chipping people, uh, root canals, heart bypasses, etc., teaching them the Morse code at a level they're not aware they're getting, like a dog whistle blows and their ears will perk up, but you can't hear it. So this is what they've done, and it's mass now. I had to research mine. I work for doctors, but... Um, Anyway, I'm just going to put this. It was called MD, a license to kill, and I live in Marietta. And the murders I spoke of were done in patterns, and it goes back to the Tesla files. And if I'm being redundant, bear with me. I'm going to finish it with this in a minute. I'm giving you background so you know where I'm coming from or I'm trying to give it. Um, Larry Flint was shot in Lawrenceville, Georgia, uh, when I was doing the book, and that was in Gwinnett County, near Cobb County, where I live, near Atlanta, Marietta. Uh, I had never met him, but I knew that uh, the shooter was programmed to shoot Mr. Flint, and he put him in a wheelchair, and uh, he um, killed his attorney. Now, they took me to uh, Jeff Kay's father was ambassador appointed by Roosevelt. So this was all planned and put together. Uh, he's a Jew, and he appointed Joe Kennedy ambassador to England, 36, till they kicked him out in 46. And this is when my father became king, and he was married to my mom, Claudia Ruth, who was queen. Now then, then in 36, he was forced to abdicate because they had Wallace Simpson she married a double, and they made up lies you wouldn't believe. And they were attributed to my father because they were controlling the media back then, it sounds like. Uh, and a lot of people got in on it because my dad, quite frankly, they did a number on him, and they have me too here in this country. But uh, my father wouldn't go along with the Illuminati. Uh, he wouldn't take their orders against his own country. He was king, and that's his priorities is Great Britain, the British. Uh, so they took him out. Now then, uh, a double married Wallace Simpson became the illegal Duke and Duchess of Windsor. And you talk about committing crimes, the fake, the phony, uh, became governor, I believe it was of the Bahamas. Yeah. Uh, and anyway... Joe Kennedy's son, Jeff K., helped in my kidnapping and bringing me to Moulton, Alabama. I was born in 39, and because of the addendum my father had signed December when he abdicated, forced abdication, in 36, he had an addendum, an attachment, and it was legal, very legal. And it said that if he had an heir, it would not disinherit the heir. The heir would inherit. And I was born 1939, kidnapped in 41 from Buckingham Palace, where my father had moved back into because the day I was born, I'm Victoria II and I'm heir. And he would have become my power of attorney and... Um, uh, taking care of my decision-making until I was old enough. So now and then his own brother was the illegal king, and that's Elizabeth's dad. And Elizabeth was 15 years old, so she's kept quiet. In fact, uh, she's amassed so much wealth with my money. And she's a war criminal, so is her father and her uh, family there that surrounds her. I hope some of the... Uh, Windsor's were on my side. I know 
um, there's some that, but it, then I'll leave it at that. They brought me to Moulton, Alabama, and gave me the name of a twin, Peggy Ann Dempsey. I married Childers, and I still have to use the name. Lina Dempsey had twins out of wedlock. Their name was Carl and Peggy. They gave me Peggy's name. Now, Lina who's a psychopath, that family was dressed up there. They were horrible. Uh, they, uh, she killed the Carl about a month after the, the twins were born, and they're about a year older than me. When they brought me there, they gave me Peggy's because she was killed about a week or two weeks before I came. I found out, and they fed her to the pigs, quite frankly. And so this was planned. Jeff K. helped in uh, flying me out of the U.K., and I am assuming or pretty sure they brought me into Cortland Air Base, which had just been built at, near Moulton. So uh, they gave me another name. Now, I found out about it in 83 after I was out at Mr. Flint's, and this is in April of 84. Uh, this is my dad again, and this is my Aunt Georgia O'Keefe. Jeff K. in the mental health, you talk about misleading. It's not going to tell you any of the truth in the documents, I don't think, that are released. His daughter went on with Obama to become um, ambassador to uh, uh, Japan. What a sick joke if it's told. Who do you think helped take out Japan, for God's sake? Uh, now I want to turn around. If I can, with this still going, that's my bed. I'm, well, yeah, it's made. Up. I'm allergic to the air conditioning, the stuff. It's got mildew doing mold, a little bit, everything. Okay, I guess I'll turn it on me here. I'm going to try to read this and tell you the background. First of all, I want to tell you that in 19... I, this was in early 80. 1982. I'd written the book in 78 and in July, uh, June the 23rd of um, 79, I had a letter from the U.S. Attorney's Office, ongoing investigation, national security involved. And it was issued by the FBI. And the U.S. Attorney sent it to me. It was in regards to what I thought was a wiretap. And it comes to find out it involved my kidnapping and from the very beginning when I was kidnapped and brought to Huntsville, Alabama, which became NASA, the space program, and thus later your satellites and all this. Now, it involved what I was writing about chipping people in their bodies and heart bypasses, uh, but most of all putting chips in root canals. That involves your dentist. And uh, now you can, uh, the murders that were done that I tell about can be proven. Mind control's invisible, but these were do done deliberately in patterns. So I want to, Philip, let me put this here as a way of, I hope that's going to go up. Uh, Philip was put there about five, four or five years after me in that family. And uh, he grew up, uh, he was, I thought he was my brother, uh, and I don't think he was born to that woman. He was put there, to Lina. I don't know who his father was. I've always wondered if it was FBI Dr Assistant Director Sullivan. I can be wrong about that. But Philip went on, and he has retired from one of the agencies, and I mean one of the big agencies. And he, anyway, his the name Philip. Now then, Elizabeth is illegal. Her father, George VI, this SOB, uh, he sold out to the Illuminati, the Rockefellers that took down my father and kidnapped me. His niece took down his own brother, lied about my mom, who was married to my dad, Sir Winston Churchill, burned the files. He had an apartment in uh, the White House. They were all buddies, and all of them know all the presidents, Jimmy Carter, who I thought was decent, and I'm going to, uh, they all knew. Their Secretary of State's had to. 
All right, the whole point was after they kidnapped me, there was illegal treaty signed. Elizabeth and her father are illegal. They're war criminals. They had no right to sign anything. They should have been locked up for treason, kidnapping. You want to go on and on. That allowed the United States to put its um, uh, military in the U.K., and that was a strategic point because they could take over Denmark, uh, Sweden, Netherlands, etc. Um, because my family, just like I hate to say Elizabeth's a cousin, but she is, um, they're, they're my cousins and aunts and uncles too, okay? So the United States moved in and they had right at the right point and got install their own monarch, and therefore, right after then came the United Nations, the Rockefellers, global government that's in place now. Controls your media out of Rock, uh, Rockefeller Plaza, NBC, ABC, CBS. I don't know about Fox, I'm pretty sure, because they control everything. Now, I want, what I wanted to put up here, and I don't know if it'll go, but I'll try, is that Philip Graham of the uh, Washington Post, Catherine Graham's husband, who they make out to be heroes. I went up there to the Washington Post. I'd written the book, had a letter from the FBI. I'm carrying this stuff. I have no money. And I had been almost killed, and that's a story that's a horror story all by itself. And in the condition I was in, and I'd worked for the district attorney, Fred Simpson, after they almost killed me in 1980. He was a district attorney in Madison County, Alabama, Huntsville, the space industry there. I'd gone to work for him. And I'll say this, uh, John Lennon was killed by a program shooter. Uh, I was writing about mind control. I didn't know about my kidnapping until after I was out Larry Flint's in 83 and... Um, the Brits told me, and the Germans. So it's all true. Uh, the Brits were, were held hostage. The United States installed their own monarch, George the Sixth and Elizabeth, and they're illegal. They're not the monarchs, but they're there. So now that I wanted to get back to Graham, I had, in doing the research, I had come upon where he had committed suicide. And I know that he sat on the board uh, of, I can't remember the name of it, but I'm going to read this, and I can't even Google it. Now, you could Google it, but he supposedly committed suicide, and I'm going to read from this. But first, I'm going to tell you this. I went in with information about my control murders, where I'd done the book, worked for doctors, had the book on me, where it went before Ravel, which was a... Uh, religious, it went before their board, but and then off it didn't. Uh, they didn't buy the book or publish it, but things got really bad for me, so bad. <laughs> um, so I carried this all with a letter from the FBI into Catherine Grant, the Post. I went in first of all, and uh, it, they got had tight security. This is early nineteen eighty two. And they let me in, and this uh, black gentleman at the information desk said, well, we can't let you go up. About that time, a um, woman stepped up like it was she was told to do it, and she said, oh, well, Catherine Graham's office is on the, I've forgotten now, I think they said the seventh floor. But anyway, it was like she told me where she was, and I was trying to get to her. So the black gentleman behind the desk called a reporter, and he came and got me. You had to be escorted up to the news desk, or to the reporters. So I went up there, and he did the same thing as the it's role-playing, and it makes me connected. He put his foot up on his desk with his shoe right in front of me, which would be, he's being nice to me, but that's not a nice gesture, unless you know what it is. It relates back to the Wayne Williams and to um, Fulton County District Attorney, and I'm going to forget his name. He's friends of, um, oh, God, she's on, Nancy Grace. Slayton, Slayton. I don't like Nancy Grace, by the way, but I thought Slayton was good. I don't know. But anyway, 
I'm relating back to just before I came up there not too long because Wayne Williams was a part of the mind control murders. Mary Welcome uh, was his attorney, etc. And uh, they did the role playing. Uh, they said Mr. Slayton, uh, the, the district attorney, was busy and couldn't see me, but his uh, assistant attorney could. So I went in there, and he put his foot up on the desk and started talking to me and said, well, we're going to see you later, you know. And as I went out the door, I looked to my, which would have been my right, and there's the district attorney Slayton, just lean, the door's open like that, and he's leaning against it, looking at me. And I, I don't, I, he said hi. I don't know if that was all. And I left, and this ensued into all this mess up until today. I want to go back to 1980 when I worked for the district attorney. And this is the assistant. This is one of the uh, district attorneys, assistant district attorneys, uh, Thomas Jefferson. So help me. Anybody can check out anything I've said. It's true. It's the media won't print it because the Illuminati, the Rockefellers control them. And they kidnapped me and took down, well, anyway, I, going back to him, he called me in his office, and I was sitting there, and that was the beginning of putting the foot in my face, well, not really, but up on the desk, which is very inappropriate, while being very nice to me. So, anyway, it's kind of like sign language or cryptic. So, here I am, and the reporter puts his foot up on the desk, and I really don't remember what was said, but I had all this information on me trying to carry it in my book, and it was heavy. And he said, well, he didn't know if he could help me, but about he took me to, he's supposed to have a security guard come up and escort me down. How about that? Well, he took me the to the elevator. Well, you know where I'm going. There was no security guard there, so I go up to where Catherine Graham is. I got up to the office, and I had letters typed, and attached was the FBI letter, and I thought I was going to do her a favor. You know, maybe she didn't know her husband had committed suicide because he had a chip in him and because who he worked for. Okay, a few minutes later, I had a security guard, big security guard, come and said I was supposed to get, he was supposed to escort me out. I went down with him, he had his hands on me, I, and I went down. And as I went out, the black, this is black security guard, and as he puts me through the front door, the uh, black uh, information guy that I'd talked to before I went up is coming in and he says, you know, we'll see you later. Well, that was back then. Now, I want to relate to you this part. Uh, I'm going to read to you because Philip Graham was uh, on an intelligence a communication satellite. And this won't tell you very much, and I put it together this morning and... Um, I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to read this off. Philip Graham, 48 years old, president of Washington Post, executive office, Washington, D.C. I'm going to leave it to you. You can Google him on Wikipedia or whatever, and you f he's got all kinds of positions and all this. Uh, so he died of gunshot wound at his farm near Marshall, Virginia, he supposedly had committed suicide, killed himself with a 28 gauge shotgun. His body was found in the bathtub, and the sheriff, I think his name was Hill, of Warrington, Virginia, uh, said that the body was found in the bathtub and, and stated that Mr. Graham had propped the shotgun in a corner of the bathtub bathroom, placed the muzzle against his head and pulled the trigger with his uh, hand, did I say that right, against